in it wherein he he prayed when uh, his children of god rebelled against god in kadesh barnea that we see that in chapter 14 verses 13 to 20 that's one prayer we dwelt on wherein uh, that prayer brought repentance to the children of israel and god uh, god's glory uh, filled the earth in verse 421 we see yeah then we went ahead and uh, and dwelt upon the studious prayer of moses from exodus chapter 33 wherein he battles against god so that his presence would come along with him moses prayed that god's presence would come along with them and god granted that and that's the second prayer that we saw thirdly we saw that moses specifically prayed when people uh when pharaoh rebelled so people rebelled in kadesh barnea people rebelled at mount horeb and pharaoh rebelled in the palace and uh, the scripture portion we we dwelt on we saw in exodus chapter 8 and 9 that um, moses prayed for pharaoh as well he prayed that the plan and purposes of god would be fulfilled through moses uh, through pharaoh and his plan and finally um, last time we dwelt on moses very signature prayer wherein uh, he adds say if i have found favor in your sight uh, in most of his prayers and um, we saw that god's children has god's favor with them god's favor is a defense for his people and god answers prayers of his children because he favors them this evening i want to dwell on another prayer and that is found in the scripture portion that we read today in numbers chapter 12 and uh, <clears throat> this prayer he prays and this time he is facing a rebellion in his own home rebellion at his own home thus far people of children uh, people of israel the children of israel they rebelled against moses rebelled against god murmured against circumstances they are not happy they are not uh, satisfied they have so many problems so many things they have come uh, across and they murmured against uh, each other murmured against uh, moses murmured against god and caused a lot of stress to moses and um, out of all the stress that moses took one last thing also he must face is rebellion at his home or rebellion with his own family members Moses is a very very peculiar and a very important and very different character that we see in the word of God <clears throat> so therefore as we dwell in this passage dear ones we see a very timely message from the lord given is to us as we live through these times so before we go into the details i want to dwell a few minutes on the context of this passage ee sandarbhamlo ee prarthana chestu unnaru ee sandarbhamlo mari ee yokka vakyamu manaki ikkada teliyeyadam jarigindi vakyam manaki anugrahinchadam jarigindi ani manamu chustu unnam premena 20 devuni yokka sangama the people of israel are moving from kibroth hatafa the people journeyed to hazroth ani chapter number 11 verse 35 tells us they were moving from one place to another place in that place that they were in kebroth hatava they had so many problems they had problems with the food they have problems with one another and so many uh, things they are burdened by so much of uh, so much of uh, stress and all of that 
we talk about manna and how they ate the clans and everything so moses just developed with a lot of headache in chapter number 11 and fi finally in verse 35 we see that they moved from kebroth hatawa the people journeyed to hazareth so they just sent in a new place so they just arrived at the new place lo and behold as they arrive and as they pitch their tents lo and behold 12th chapter verse 1 says Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Cushite woman whom he had married, for he had married a Cushite woman. So rebellion started to brew inside his, his own home. This is a very unique rebellion, dear ones. This is a very unique rebellion because thus far, the children of Israel were rebelling against the circumstances, rebelling against food, rebelling against a lot of facilities and so on and so forth. And they are having internal problems and Moses is, was dealing with all of them. But this one is a peculiar problem because of two reasons. Number one reason is this one is from his own home. The least place where we expect our problems. We think that our problems are from outside. When we go outside our home, we see a lot of problems. We deal with a lot of problems. At work, we have problems. At marketplace, we have problems. We have so many problems. But this one seems to be coming from the inside. Rebellion after rebellion after rebellion, but this time is from his own home. Truly did the Lord say in John's Gospel, chapter 7, verse 5, For neither did his brethren believe in him. Exactly the same way as brethren of Jesus did not believe in him. We also have Aaron and Miriam, same from the, from the same household, rebelling against Moses. And in fact, they too also have the same commission received by Moses. By profession, Miriam was a prophetess. She had the word of God in her mouth. And by profession, Aaron was a priest. He was dedicated and he was anointed and both have this anointing from the Lord and they are both joint commissioners along with Moses for the deliverance of Israel. Therefore, dear ones, opposition, rebellion is coming from the inside. So that's uh, uniqueness about this unique rebellion. He had faced many, many rebellions, dear ones, but this one is a very unique rebellion which comes from inside his homes. There could be several reasons why this rebellion came from the inside. They were almost there towards the Canaan land. In a few chapters down the line, they will be able to go to the Canaan land. They have passed through the wilderness. Almost there. Just about there, this rebellion happens. There could be several reasons why this rebellion has come. One of the reasons um, as we read about this, this narrative, uh, one of the reasons scholars say that just before in the chapter number 11, Moses appoints 70 elders. Moses says to God, he goes to God and says, God, I'm so stressed with this people, with this rebellion, with these problems. All of these things are killing me. Would you please help me? When he prays in chapter number 10 and uh, number 11, God says, go appoint 70 leaders for you, 70 elders for you. So what Moses did is he goes and he, he appoints 70 elders. So many scholars believe that this, this, uh, this one thing that Moses did, Aaron did not like it because he did not consult Aaron. He did not consult Miriam on whom also the co-commission of deliverance of Israel is given. So that could be one reason. The other reason could be that um, these two, Aaron and uh, uh, Miriam, did not um, uh, mix well with the uh, with this Cushat woman whom uh, Moses married and so on and so forth. It could be because of many other reasons. They did not like the authority to monopoly of, uh, of Moses could be one of the reasons. But nevertheless, whatever was the problem, they started to brew this confusion. They started to brew this rebellion and they started to ignite in the thoughts of people a new problem. Is already have full of problems. Life is full of problems. And on the top of it, 
my own home household people are brewing some more problems so that is what we can see in this uh, in, in this uh, in this passage dear ones moses in all of these is so he looks so tired in this in this passage as the psalmist clearly puts in in psalm 55 verses 12 to 15 if you look into psalm 55 verses 12 to 15 the word of god says for it was not an enemy that reproached me then i could have borne it neither was it he that hated me that did magnify himself against me then i would have hid myself from him but it was thou o oh man mine equal my guide and mine acquaintance we took sweet counsel together and walked unto the house of god in company let death seize upon us and let them go down quick into hell for wickedness is in their dwelling and among them you see that's how the it summary this passage summarizes the tiredness of moses this passage summarizes what internal rebellion can do to the uh, to the servants of god so dear ones this is a very unique rebellion very unique inside the home but um, one beautiful thing about this passage is as we look into this passage we see chapter number 12 we see an exhibition of an ultimate meekness not only it is an unique rebellion it is an exhibition of ultimate meekness so as we read this and they said uh, both of these people Aaron and Miriam and they said verse number 2 12th chapter verse number 2 they said has the lord indeed spoken only through moses has he not spoken through us also so they are brewing this confusion they are igniting this evil thought but look at chapter uh, look at verse 3 now when something is brewing we expect people to reciprocate we we expect people to respond but look at verse 3 i would have expected in verse 3 then moses said this or then moses did that but that's not what is written in verse 3 look at verse 3 what it says now the man moses was very meek more than all people who were on the face of the earth that is the sum and summary of moses as he received this accusation from his own uh, brother and sister moses was the meekest man Mo- now the man moses was very meek so now we see an exceptional behavior here in exhibiting his ultimate meekness ultimate meekness only a storm can prove the strength of your anchor only a storm can prove the strength of your anchor me chukkani yokka balamu mari goppa tufane dani yokka balanni manaki kanaparustade ani oka ayana annadu only a storm could bring to light the strength of your anchor and that's what we see in verse 3 in verse number 3 we see the strength of moses here though he was so tired from all these kind of accusations all these kind of rebellions we see that his anchor is still he is not withering he is not confused he is not uh, moved at all he is so stable and verse number 3 talks about the stability of the anchor that he put in the storm when it is brewing inside his own house this rebellion is so untimed this rebellion is so unwelcomed at this time because just before this chapter moses is already tired so many problems he has solved thus far and he is tired with all kinds of quarreling all kinds of problems thus far but now this is this is coming inside his own house but yet in verse number 3 it is told to us that he was meek in the problem he was quiet in the problem he was not vocal in the problem so he exhibited ultimate meekness ultimate meekness it could have proved a great problem he had if uh, the people of israel held hands together along with 
Aaron and uh, Miriam, it would have caused a great problem. But still Moses was very calm, very calm. Somebody said that he was like a deaf man. He was like a deaf man. And he heard not. Anjapi, Pakayan Rashid. Nizanga, Entha Jarigina, Nigasala, Untima, the Chalano, Lady Enti, and Anta Untanga, Chalasal, Entha Gatgarsina, Palako Enti, Entha Chapina, Venamanti, Animano, Anta Untana, twenty Sadrushin Ekada, Manajustuna, Moshe, Asala, Kadala Kunda, Medala Kunda, Kanisu Venapanda to Koda, behave chestuna to Gamanakan Pitcher the Kada. About he is he's like a deaf man. That exhibits the strength of his meekness. Ultimate meekness, dear ones. Not only that, even his silence troubled God. Sometimes silence kills, right? It looks like it troubled God. Because when he is silent, God opened. And suddenly the Lord said to Moses. Because he heard. Lord heard everything. What he's saying is that, and they said, as the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses, has he not spoken through us also? And the Lord heard. When we read that verse, dear ones, something should strike us. There are some millions and millions and millions of angels worshipping the Lord, holy, 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 and is the Lord God Almighty. When so much of worship is going on in heaven, so many saints upon the earth are praying and then they are all worshipping the Lord. But yet he could hear one voice against his servant. And the Lord heard. That is the omniscience, the omnipresence and omnipotent God can do that. Out of all the chaos, if, we, if there is so much of noise here, can, I, can you hear what I am going to speak? While I am speaking, you can't. But yet God can. Out of all the noise of so many thousands of Israelites, he could hear the voice against his servant. And his Bible says that he heard. But then this man, this, this Moses, is so calm and so positioned, no noise, no, no movements at all. But even that bothered the Lord, it appears to us. Verse 4 says, and suddenly the Lord said to Moses, and suddenly the Lord said to Moses and to Aaron and to Miriam, come out, you there, you three, to the tent of the meeting. And the three of them came out. So, dear ones, not only Moses was calm when, uh, when they were accusing him, Moses was even calm when the Lord said Moses is a faithful man. Nothing bothered him. Okay, there are some people on this side who are telling that this man is a is a, uh, is unfaithful man. This man is a sinner, and all these people are accusing me. Absolutely no change in me. I'm very quiet still. And from this side, the Lord is saying that this man is a faithful man. And this side, the Lord is saying that this man is a holy man. This side, the uh, the, the Lord is saying that this man is an upright man. Nothing changed. No voice. No words. Nothing. That is the meekness of Moses. Power under control. Nothing can change the posture of this man. Either accusations or a lord being on his side. Okay, Balawan Vekti, Nat Arfun Ninchuni, I in Gurinchini Kain Delsu, I in Angel Sodomic Delsa, and Japan Agurinchani Satya Lujapin and no Itter on Kono, Bush Chaser on Kono, then Injastana Guru. We are Injastana. Jesawa Japana is a Japan guy, huh? Walney, Mano, Inca, Kench Parsidanke, Trijasta. Can he at twenty? Um, Manastato Moshe Laganbardo. He was not at all moved, even though the Lord said, you, 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 you personally read what the Lord said. And the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud and stood at the entrance of the tent and called Aaron and Miriam. Hey, you three, come on, Anna and Kun. They would, they would, 
మరి మన పేర్లు పిలిచి మీరు బయటికి రండి అన్నారు అనుకోండి మనకి ఎంత భయం వేస్తుంది అటువంటి భయ పరిస్థితులు ఈ ముగ్గురు వచ్చారు బయటికి అండ్ ది బోత్ స్కేమ్ ఫార్వర్డ్ అందులో ఇద్దరిని పిలుస్తూ ఉన్నాడు ఏ మేరియం కమ్ ఇయర్ అండ్ ఏర్ అండ్ కమ్ ఇయర్ మ్యాన్ అని పిలుస్తూ ఉన్నారు హియర్ మై వర్డ్స్ ఇఫ్ దేర్ ఈస్ అ ప్రాఫిట్ అమాంగ్ యూ ఐ ద లాడ్ మేక్ మై సెల్ఫ్ నోన్ టు హిమ్ ఇన్ అ విజన్ ఐ స్పీక్ విత్ హిమ్ ఇన్ అ డ్రీమ్ not so with my servant moses did you hear that not so with my servant moses he is faithful in all my home i wish the volume of the sound of god's voice is written in here maybe he has raised his voice what do you think about my servant with him i speak mouth to mouth clearly and not in riddles and he and he beholds the form of the lord why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant moses you have seen all these 40 years how i have spoken to him face to face lord was furious i wish that how furious the lord is when he is speaking would have written here and the anger of the lord was kindled against them and he departed it's like a storm coming in and then pouncing on these two people the voice of the lord which breaks the sea darts he spoke and he left and he departed against them and he departed did moses change anything nothing so all of this happened moses is still calm and he still did not do anything so a unique problem a unique rebellion an exhibition of an ultimate of ultimate meekness we see in the life of moses that reminds us isaiah chapter 53 verse 7 exactly how the lord behaved or how the lord was in front of all his accusers verse 7 says he was oppressed and he was afflicted yet he opened not his mouth he is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb but so he opened not his mouth he opened not his mouth aaron and miriam thought that they were defending the work of the lord aaron and miriam thought that they are on the side of the lord aaron and miriam thought that they were uh, uh, they were encouraging the work of the lord but the lord is not on their side moses if if to that matter moses is more jealous than these two people when he brought the tablets from uh, from god and he saw all this idolatry which aaron was instrumental in doing all of that his anger rose in that time he was more jealous than these people you know somebody wrote moses as bold as a lion in the cause of god but as mild as a lamb in his own cause that is the meekness of moses devuni vishayallo aina garjinchu simham kani tannu taanuku vache sariki aina oka gorra pilla ani raashadu nisanga that is meekness when it comes to the matters of god let's be like a lion paursham kaligi aasakti kaligi devuni koraku manam undali మనకు మనకు వచ్చేసరికి ఏ విధంగా ఉండాలట ఒక గొర్రె పిల్లవాలే లైక్ అ ల్యాంబ్ బట్ వెన్ ఇట్ కమ్స్ టు గాడ్ యూ షుడ్ బీ లైక్ అ లాయన్ సో దట్స్ వాట్ వి సీ ఇన్ మోజస్ లైఫ్ డియర్ వన్స్ సో అ యునిక్ ప్రాబ్లమ్ అ యునిక్ రిబెలియన్ అల్టిమేట్ హ్యూమిలిటీ ఆఫ్ మోజస్ అల్టిమేట్ మీక్నెస్ ఆఫ్ మోజస్ వి సీ డిమాన్స్ట్రేటెడ్ so therefore verse number 10 when the cloud removed from over the tent the lord departed behold miriam was leprous like snow and aaron turned towards miriam and behold she was leprous here we see the judgment of the lord descending upon miriam judgment of the lord descending upon miriam moses own sister Moses own sister both are same companions anna chelli lapte akka che a thammudu 
when uh, moses was uh, put in that basket you know she was watching now she is accusing she she's accusing now the judgment of the lord descended upon miriam several things that we can remember about her sin number one her sin is a jealous jealousy she showed jealousy in verse number 2 numbers chapter 12 and they said had the lord not indeed spoken only had the lord indeed spoken only by moses had he not spoken by us also as we read this passage we see that she is jealous about her brother's commission her brother is leading all these people he is the he is like a a president to all this big huge organization she could not resist that she is jealous she was bearing all of this in her in her heart until this last moment before they go into canaan land and finally the true colors came out the true colors came out she was envious she was jealous and not only jealous she is envying the gift of moses and in what she says is has the lord indeed spoken has he not spoken through us also nannu kuda devudu vaadukunnadu kada nenu kuda devunu paricharakunne kada ayinike ayinike naaku enti teda ayina kanna nenu goppa vaadni anukune tvanti jealousiness or enviness of miriam came into her life to cover the gift of a neighbor is a very wrong thing and it is against the law of god and it's an offense to god and then not only that one more sin that we can see is an evil mouth evil speaking gossiping brewing problems inside the congregation so what what did she said miriam and aaron spoke against moses and they said has the lord indeed spoken only through moses so they are going inside the community and then spreading the gospel uh, spreading the gospel <laughs> saying that you know you, this guy do you think that he is the, he is the man lord also spoke through us all of these kind of problems they are internally brewing so evil speaking evil of her own brother and not only that she seems to have provoked her brother aaron because these two are trying to brew the problem miriam and aaron spoke against moses i don't know about this character called aaron he just listens to everything that comes across him and then follows naluguru tho paatu nathaniel antar a type anamata naluguru em cheptha alu sel potu edi manchido edi chaddado appude kada moshe ayanni rakshinchadu devana ugrata nunchi rakshinchadu atanni annane అయినప్పటికీ నేను కూడా పని చేయలేదు సో నలుగురితో పాటు ఏదైతే అలా వెళ్ళిపోవటమే అలాంటి వాడు ఈయన సో అలాగ మనకు కనబడుతున్నాడు హీ షీ ప్రోవోక్ట్ మిరియం ఐ మీన్ మిరియం ప్రోవోక్ట్ ఏరన్ అండ్ దేర్ ఫోర్ దే బోత్ వెంట్స్ టుగెదర్ ఇట్స్ లైక్ ఈవ్ ప్రోవోకింగ్ యాడమ్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ థింగ్ దట్ హ్యాపన్ దేర్ సో దేర్ ఫోర్ దే బోత్ బ్రూవ్ దిస్ ప్రాబ్లమ్ టుగెదర్ the punishment that the lord has given the wrath of god descended upon uh, miriam is a very unique one she turned leprous leprosy what the lord has actually done is the lord removed her from the congregation that's what they are supposed to do once you are stricken by uh, this this is called lepr- leprosy the priest should examine him or her and then put her out or him out of the congregation until they become well but they never become well so that's what the lord did here the punishment descended the punishment was so humiliating and the punishment was not internal it is external that means everybody can see the shame everybody can see the disease everybody can see that she is not a part of the congregation now she must have felt so bad about this so embarrassed about this now she has to utter she 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 what did she said as the lord indeed spoken only through moses now what her mouth should say 
after this thing happened, she should shout unclean, unclean, don't come towards me. Unclean, unclean, don't come towards me. Or I am an outcast, don't come towards me. She wanted to be the queen of Israel. She became the outcast of Israel. So that's, that's the way that we see at sin. And this punishment that the, that the wrath of God descended upon, upon uh, Miriam. So she's out of the camp now. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them and he departed. When the cloud removed over the tent, behold, Miriam was leprous. And Aaron turned towards Miriam and behold, she was leprous. Now here is the context of the prayer. So this is the introduction to this prayer or this is the a uh, stepping stone for that that prayer el narafa na la la so that is the five words in hebrew el narafa na la el narafa na la if you google that word that words five words there are plenty of uh, songs like uh, mantra it is told to me that um, israel is free of uh, covid 19 and uh, they claim that it is the hand of the Lord who removed this entire thing and that they sing this song. El Narafanala. Just five words. This is the shortest prayer in the Old Testament, in Torah. Just five words. Very powerful words. Which means, oh God, Heal her, please her. That's the five-letter word. God, uh, Moses said, Oh God, heal her, please her. And that is the meaning of uh, this shortened prayer. Very short prayer. There are only two short prayers in the Bible. One we already dwelt. Which one is that? Maranatha, Lord Jesus, come. That is the shortest prayer in the New Testament. Maranatha, Lord Jesus, come. This one, O oh God, heal her. In the New Testament. So, as we, as we see this, um, this prayer that he offered, dear ones, we see that uh, when, when uh, Moses and Aaron, uh, and Aaron said to Moses, 11th verse, Oh, my Lord, do not punish us because we have done foolishly and have sinned. Now, Maryam, Maryam is leprous. She is unable. She is outside the community. Um, she is not yet cast but out, but um, she is right there. She is in shock. But here is the elder brother, Moses, uh, Aaron, saying to Moses, Oh, my Lord. See? He is treating his brother, his younger brother, and he's saying, Oh my Lord, do not punish us because we have done foolishly. So he's including in the sin, he's not excluding himself. The Lord was gracious upon him. He wasn't stricken by lepro le leprosy. The Lord was gracious upon him. But, uh, uh, but, uh, but, Moses, but he said to Moses, Moses, uh, my Lord, I have sinned. We have sinned. See this beautiful verse. And Moses, I'm um, sorry, in verse 11. And Aaron said to Moses, Oh my Lord, do not punish us because we have done foolishly and have sinned. In his heart, he was thinking that Moses was angry and he complained uh, to God saying that I am angry on this, uh, on this sister of mine. Therefore, let your anger be shown upon her kind of thing. Never did Moses pray that way. Let her not be as one dead whose flesh is eaten away when he comes out of his mother's womb. So, dear ones, that is the cry of Aaron to his brother. Brother comes to Moses and says, Oh my Lord, forgive us of our this great sin. Now, we all know that Moses was a meek man because verse 3 says, he is very quiet 
He didn't speak any word. And uh, truth is on his side. The Lord is on his side. So he's in a very strong position to say that um, if, if I was there, I would have said like a punch <laughs> I <laughs> say, hey, good, good, good thing happened. Manchu pana hindi, ane ane twenty bar chala mandan tera. Na munde ano koron, na munde jeppe ne ko, ane twenty bar koron tera. Kani ikada man kalanti moshe kano bar tholeda. Miriam would have wounded Moses with her words. Maatal to. Mari Bain Karanga Dushin Chatlagamana Justuna. But Moses uttered a word of prayer. Out of the mouth of Moses came these five beautiful words. Oh God, heal her, please her. Moses' words are healing words. Miriam's words were hurting words. It hurt Moses. But Moses' words were healing as he uttered these words, Yal Narfa Nanar, O Lord, heal her now. Moses sought, Mo uh, Miriam sought Moses' shame, but Moses sought the Lord's mercy. Miriam sought Moses' shame. She wanted to humiliate Moses. But Moses sought the Lord's mercy. He cried unto the Lord with a loud voice. What did he do? In uh, As Aaron saw, Miriam was leprous and Aaron came to Moses. Remember, those two are outside. The Lord called them out and, uh, and the Lord was angry upon them and Miriam was leprous. Moses did not know anything. And now Aaron comes to Moses and says, Moses, please do not let the sin of wrath come upon us. And then Moses cried to the Lord. Oh God, please heal her, please. The Bible in King James Version, it says, He cried unto the Lord. He cried unto the Lord. He just departed. He just departed. In verse number 10, in verse number 9, he says, And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. Something much better on Kondi. While Ilpoth and Tanyas, Gabali, forget Aristanga. Hello, wait, 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 wait. Pair bed will stop. Our type on Mati, Yarupo Alagondi. So when, 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 the, when, the, when the cloud is departing and Miriam is like this, he knew the only one who can heal her is departing. So therefore, what he will do? He will cry out to the Lord Lord, do not depart. Lord, wait. Lord, wait. And Moses cried to the Lord, Oh God, please heal her, please. Please heal her, please. He cried. He cried. Because that cloud departed. Now there are only five words, the shortest prayer he ever uttered to the Lord. But in those five words, there is forgiveness offered by Moses. He has no idea that God is going to do like this. But when he did it, he immediately forgave. And that's why he could pray. If there is any deceit in his heart, let's say bitterness in his heart, and he says, <laughs> In Tamata is in the one and they would want to chop and mirror in the Tabada chest in the Rodiolo. Provost was virtue and ante probably want to hold on. In Pradhan Yasronic in Gavana Tilsa, Pastani Rodiolo in Tabadan Skuni, the Sostan. 
అలాంటిది ఏమి లేదు మోషేకి ద మూమెంట్ హీ సా బికాస్ హీ హాస్ బీన్ ప్రాక్టీసింగ్ కంపాషన్ ఓవర్ కంపాషన్ ఓవర్ కంపాషన్ ఓవర్ దిస్ చిల్డ్రన్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ ఫర్ లాస్ట్ ఫార్టీ ఇయర్స్ వై వుడ్ హీ నాట్ షో ఇన్ హిజ్ ఓన్ హోమ్ డియర్ వన్స్ తెలియనట్టు జనాంగం కొరకు ఆయన ఇంత ఏమంటున్నాడు దేవుడితో అవసరమైతే నన్ను చంపి కానీ వీళ్ళని తీసుకుని వెళ్ళు అన్న ప్రార్థన చేసిన వ్యక్తి ఈయన ఆ వ్యక్తి ఇప్పుడు ఏం చేస్తున్నాడు ప్రభువా దేవునికి మొరపెడుతూ ఉన్నాడు మోస ఎలుగెత్తి దేవా దయచేసి ఈమెను బాగు చేయమని యహోవాకు మొరపెట్టాను దయచేసి ఈమెను బాగు చేయము తెలుగులో ఇంకా కొంచెం తక్కువ ఉంది దయచేసి ఈమెను బాగు చేయము నాట్ ఓన్లీ హీ ఫర్ గేవ్ ద ఇంజురీ దట్ కాస్డ్ హీ హాస్ నో ఐడియా అండ్ ఆల్ ఆఫ్ దాట్ హీ హాస్ నో బిటర్నెస్ ఇన్ హిస్ హార్ట్ secondly he did not even ask that god would deal with her not only he forgave but he also did not approach god to deal with this matter nor call for justice against her please do justice in all of this matter because god he has been asking god so many times to deal with situation over situation confusion over confusion problem over problems but this one he will tell what to do lord heal her that's it you know what he prayed for he prayed for reversal of judgment reversal of judgment god you have judged and you have done this now i pray that you reverse it sometimes it really really bothers me as much as i read this uh, how could he pray this lord you have done this now undo this can we do that manam cheyagalva deva idi chesao kada inga din tise idi cheyku ila cheyoddu adi tise he is actually praying to reverse the judgment reverse the judgment so the lord who departed in verse number 9 comes back in verse 15 but the lord in verse 14 but the lord said to moses is almost answering the prayer i will tell you i will reverse it but there is a process to reverse it i'll give her 7 days what he says is that if her father had spit in her face should she not be shamed 7 days in fact the fatherhood of the of the lord did not depart from miriam is actually saying this if her father had spit in her face should she not be ashamed seven days exactly like that i have sent leprosy on her should she not be ashamed for seven days should should she be not be outside the camp for seven days let her be shut outside the camp seven days and after that she may be brought in again so miriam and the people did not set out on the march till miriam was brought in again and after that the people went out from uh, hezeroth and camped in the wilderness of paran and the 12th chapter ends there so the only words uttered by moses is that five words in the entire chapter ee motto chapter antatiki kuda aidu vachanal palikadu moshe just five little words the lord reverted the judgment reverted the judgment there once there are many things that we can receive by faith through these verses that we have read dear ones there is mercy offered as as the servant of god prayed there is a reversion of healing or or there is healing in the life of miriam but there is also justice offered as people could not move because of the rebellion of miriam people were camping in that place until she comes back the congregation could not move did not make any progress they were stagnant there until she come she came back and the bible tells us that 
how much shame she would have gone through that would be uh, the lasting judgment upon her life dear ones there are many things that we can uh, receive from the first portion of this uh, passage in the congregation when we are all together walking together and we are all commissioned in one way or the other jealousy envy and uh, obstructing the servant of god accusing the servants of god evil speaking of the servants of god and uh, proving unnecessary contradictions and gossiping against the servants of god is absolutely prohibited in the sight of god absolutely prohibited in the sight of god moses was a meek man and he was quiet but the lord was standing on behalf of him the same case happened in couple of chapters later in the lives of caleb and joshua when they were standing for the lord and said that land that god is going to give we can go and inherit the children of israel took stones and they wanted to kill them but the lord the glory of the lord stood beside them and he defended his servants so exactly the same way the lord stood on behalf of moses and he defended the righteousness of moses so there are plenty of things that we can learn as we all live together as a congregation no envy no jealousy no evil talk and no provoking people or brewing problems inside the congregation it will obstruct the plan and purposes of god for the congregation they were stagnant all through out the time that she was out the man of god who was standing on behalf of the people of god was able to show great meekness was able to show great meekness in the in the kind of problem he faced therefore dear ones there are so many so many so many things that we can learn from this passage and how the lord dwelt the lord is always on the side of his faithful people the lord is always on the side of his faithful people he knows how to lift the horn of his servants he knows people may say so many things people may brew so many bad things and so on and so forth but the lord is always on the side of his servants but more than all of these things i want to dwell a uh, a few things from this prayer right now the lord is asking us to reflect on this one prayer that moses has done for his sister so the same kind of prayer that we can also do in the perilous times like this if we are praying for this condition especially for our country we can replace if we put our country in the place of miriam we can understand what the depth of this prayer is about as i come to this application part our country has dwelt or dealt with the servants of god in a very crude way have not received the gospel they have not received the people of god they have persecuted the people of god they have killed and the blood of his saints was on the land and they have created so much of tensions and problems to the community of god they have destroyed so many temples so many so many churches they have ransacked the people's lives and their properties they took the clothes of the the servants of god and and uh, uh, and make them walk naked in the streets this is our nation and right now it is rotting it is rotting but for a man of god like moses if we could pray oh god heal her please now the lord is still able 
as I was reading this, and as I was meditating upon this, I was reflecting these words for myself, for myself, and say, what is the difference between me and Moses? You ask for yourself. What's the difference between me and Moses? Moses is not even hurt by what Miriam has said. He didn't even know. He didn't even have a, a, at least a little bit of feeling to speak out. Miriam, that's not true. She had no, he has absolutely no feelings at all. Until and unless he saw the leprous sister, he had no feelings at all. He bore it on by himself. He was enduring the pain. He was enduring the suffering. Yet nothing he spoke out. But when the judgment of the Lord des uh, descended upon her, he could raise his voice and say, Oh Lord, heal her, please, now. Our country is grasping for breath at this very moment. They don't have oxygen to breathe. You see the condition? They don't have oxygen to breathe. If they would have oxygen, people would have survived. Equally with all kinds of people, the servants of God been called home. I've been telling people that we are the ambassadors of Christ living in this planet. And when the ambassadors are called home, it means war. If America sends ambassadors to India and America calls back the ambassadors home, that means America is not in peace with India. And we as an ambassadors of Christ, living like a pilgrims and aliens in this world, our citizenship is in heaven. And we live in this world as an ambassador, and if God calls us home, it means the land is going to be at war. We are the light and the salt of this world. And if we are called home, this world is going to rot in darkness without preserveness. And that's what happening, dear ones. Many servants of God are called home. The land is going to rot. We need people who will raise their voice, who can say, oh God. Heal, heal her. Revert the judgment, reverse the judgment. Stop, it's enough. Just five words. God was able to reverse it. What is it that is different between you and Moses must challenge you tonight? What is it that the difference? Can we go to God and say, God, what is the difference? Why not me? Why should my prayer, if I pray this, why this thing should not stop? That is the zeal and that is the um, passion that we all need to carry as we see this prayer. A wonderful prayer. Just five little words. Shortest prayer you see in Torah, in the Old Testament. But it could reverse the judgment of God. God wants to raise that kind of people in you and in me. We've been praying so much about our lives, our families, and, and our things, our jobs, our, our securities, and our life, and our health itself. But Moses, as we look into Moses, he looked at his sister who sinned and who could pray, God, revert the judgment. And God healed her and reverted the judgment. Well, it went through a seven days of process and procedure. But yet, God honored the prayer of Moses. So therefore, dear ones, as we send a, spend a few minutes uh, today, let's apply this to our lives to current times right now. Our country needs prayers desperately. I have a prayer group that, uh, to which I belong and many of you know. There are many, many people in my own group. They are sending... Um, this WhatsApp message is saying that, okay, my turn, my turn has come. I am affected. Please pray for me. You know, when this kind of thing happens, the fear is descending upon the lives and it is rotting uh, the, the minds of people. That is how this disease is. And, um, you know, more than with any other symptoms, people are just affected by the fear. And that's how it's in the grip right now our country.
and we don't know when our term comes. Don't think that we are all safe here, we are all vaccinated, nonsense. When God takes away oxygen from this planet, not even vaccine can help us. Because we are not playing against the sovereignty of God. If God thinks second, third, fourth, fifth, tenth wave should come, it will come. But for people who can stand and intercede, God, heal her now, please. God will be able to honor such kind of men. So I was encouraged as we are praying last night, I mean, on Friday, we are praying earnestly that God would raise his people who can deliver the message of God and people would heal spiritually and also physically from this entire thing. But let us all continue to pray for our land, for our country and um, support in whatever way that we can. Pray earnestly. Let's be the Moses of the hour. Who knows? It is your prayer which is most important in the entire circle of prayers. Maybe God is waiting for your prayer. Maybe God is waiting for your prayer. Maybe God is waiting for your voice. Who knows that your prayer can make a difference. For such a time as this, God has given us health. Such a time as this, God has given us life. For such a time as this, God has brought us as a family. So let us be encouraged to take this time to pray just like Moses has prayed. El Narafar Nanala meaning, oh Lord, heal her now. Honestly, we pray. Let us bow our heads in <clears throat> and invite the Lord to minister to us as we pray. We pray with faith. We pray earnestly. Yes, our country is against the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes, our country has spit upon our lives. Yes, they have killed many people. They are persecuting many people. They are ransacking the churches and the homes of the believers in Christ. They have no values. They have no life. They have created a lot of problems. The church is in turmoil. It's in the, in the midst of persecution. Yes. But yet, let's look to the Lord and cry out for healing. Oh God, heal her. Please her, we pray. Just like Moses, my father. Let's take this time, a few minutes. A few minutes as we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for this word that you have given us. We are encouraged, my Lord, this evening through the prayer of Moses, who prayed healing for, her, for, for his sister. Just five little words he uttered, and Father, you, you have taken time to revert all the judgment. My Father, you are a merciful God. My Father, we remember that you are a very uh, uh, gentle God. My Father, we remember that you are a very loving God. Who do not, my father, desire the destruction of people. But you desire them to be saved and, and, and be joyous in your presence. So therefore we come to you in the name of our Lord and our Savior. My father, and we repeat the same prayer. My father, heal my land. My father, my father, I pray as it is grasping for breath this evening. My father, I pray, Lord, that you would heal the land. You would send forth your word and heal their diseases, my father. That you are intervention, Father, take place in our country, my Father. My Father, I pray that your hand of protection, your hand of healing be upon our land. My Father, revert, my Father, I pray. My Father, I pray that you would send help, my Father, into our country. My Lord, I pray for so many people who are suffering, my Lord. I pray for my own family members, my Father. One of them has lost their brothers and, and one of them have lost their brother and sister and also her mother. My father, all of these people are suffering many deaths in a single family within a short period of time. My father, I pray for your mercy and your protection, my Lord. Have mercy, my Lord, I pray. Have mercy. Lord, I pray for all the doctors, my Lord. 
I pray for all the hospitals, Lord. Many people are in the corridors. Many people are being served in the parking lots. Many people are treated uh, in, in, in any place possible, my Father. They have no oxygen, my Lord. They are grasping for breath and many of them are leaving their lives. My Father, there is no medicine, my Father. And even if the medicine is available, the rates are so high. People are so corrupted during these times. My Father, this, this will not, my Father, uh, be any good for our country. My Father, I pray, Lord, that you are, you are so merciful. I pray that your supernatural intervention come and reside and abide with our country people. My Father, I pray for, uh, for all the governing body. I pray for all the uh, uh, ministers and, and who are in authority, my Father. Give them grace, give them wisdom, my Father, to handle this situation, my Father. Lord, as people are so ignorant of the dangers, my Father, they are behaving ignorantly. My Father, I pray that you would protect them supernaturally. Give them grace, give them guidance, Lord. My Father, if you would not do this, not even one will survive. They all will perish, my Lord. We all will be gone. But for your mercy, but for your grace, we beg, we beg, we beg, and we beg. My Father, I pray, Lord, give us grace, I pray. Lend the breath, my Father, I pray. Send in oxygen to breathe, my Father, I pray. Many people are grasping for breath. I pray, my Father, that you would be with them and provide them and lead them and guide them and, and Father, be the center of their lives, my Father. Many are crying, my Father. Many deaths in a single family, my Father. Somebody lost their mother. Somebody lost their father in the same home. I pray, Lord, that supernatural comfort descend right now, I pray. Lord, I pray for supernatural comfort in the lives of people who lost their loved ones. So precious, loved ones gone in just a minute. My father, their, their corpses are lying on the roads. There's no place to bury them. There's no respect, no honor for their bodies. My father, they are just thrown upon the roads. Father, you are seeing all of this, my father. I pray only for mercy. I beg for mercy. I beg for grace. I beg for mercy, my father. Mercy, mercy, mercy. We will not survive. Another single day, my Father, without you. My Father, I pray. Lord, lend your grace. Send your grace upon our land. Heal our land, my Father. Raise your children who can cry, my Father. Who can cry day in and day out. For the sins of our nation. Raise people who can be faithful with your word. Help them, Lord, to reject and refuse every self-glory at this moment, my Father. That only the name of the Lord would be glorified. My Lord, raise such servants. Raise such, 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 such servants, my Father. Some of my own brothers are suffering. My own family members are suffering. Many of our family members sitting here are suffering. They are in tremendous fear. Fear has descended into their lives. It is rotting their lives, my Father. All their faiths are shaking at this moment right now. Lord, we understand and we, and we bow to your sovereign will, my Father. But yet, like Moses, we, we, we raise a banner of mercy. Asking for mercy. 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 Oh, God. Heal. Please. Heal her right now, I pray. Only by faith, my Father. Not by any merit. We stand not by merit in this place. But we only stand by grace and mercy. Thank you, my Lord. Help us, Lord, that we continue this burden that you have given us to this ministry, my Lord. I will continue to bear the burden. Continue to bear the burden. Let us help us, Lord, not to relax. No, my Father, a single day more, a single day more in our lives is not granted for ourselves. But is granted such a time like this that we be faithful upon our knees and cry out to you like Moses did. Give us that heart. Give us this heart.
and help us, Lord, to be faithful. Every moment that you give, every moment that you lend your breath, help us, Lord, to be grateful and to pray and to intercede for those of them who are suffering. At this very moment, I pray, Lord, in the midst of the suffering, I pray that people would turn towards you. They will not, they cannot, because they are blind and deaf. I pray, my Father, that you would do the miracle in their lives. Turn their hearts towards you, to the living God. And help them, Lord, to survive. Help them, Lord, to survive. We thank you for the ministry, for your grace and for your mercy. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. In the precious name of our Lord and our Savior, we pray. Amen. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, communion of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us both now and forevermore.